Should you hang from a bar if you have lower back pain to try to get some decompression or some relief from that pain, whether it be before your workout or after? This is a great question I had come in from a viewer just like you, and we're gonna dive into this topic today. What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com where I teach you how to overcome persistent chronic low back pain by mastering your mindset, improving your movements, and building smarter strength. And before we jump into this specific topic, I want to give you a free gift. If you have any kind of disc injury, whether it be herniation, bulge, rupture, you have something going on and you're trying to figure out what in the world you should be doing minus surgery, minus copious amounts of medication to dull the pain, I want to give you a free gift that thousands of people have downloaded and used and are getting lots and lots of value from. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. Whether you are fusion, again, herniations, bulge, ruptures, it's what I specifically use, the strategy that I used when it comes to exercise and movement when it came to my own recovery from a ruptured L5 S1 disc nine plus years ago. Go get it. Fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. Let's jump in. So on the topic of decompression, there is a lot of controversy, a lot of debate on whether it is good or is not good. If you have seen my videos, probably one of the most hated video on the internet in this space would be the inversion table video that I made many moons ago. Still feel passionate about how much time we waste on inversion tables. Not that there are not outliers who have used inversion tables and seen some minor success, but I'm in the business of getting long-term lifelong relief, not temporary short term through stretching and products that you can find all over the interwebs. So when we're looking at the idea of decompressing the spine using something like hanging from a bar, you have to kind of ask yourself a few different questions. Who are you, right? Like, what is your background? How beat up are you? How old are you? How long have you been in the industry? pressing weight or squatting or deadlifting or what, whatever have you? How many surgeries have you had? How many you know, past circumstances are dictating where you are right now when it comes to, again, injuries or just age? There's a lot of factors you have to play. Now, are you a young athlete where you don't have any kind of proof that you have any kind of severe damage to your spine because you've consulted with a professional, not me, a YouTube person, but a professional, a doctor who understands what they're looking at. If you've seen them, no real major issues, maybe some decompression could use, could be valuable in your situation, then this is where you might be able to use something like hanging from a bar to get some relief. Now, remember, it's not gonna be a long-term relief strategy. This is something that I personally would do, even with a ruptured disc, even with you know 15 plus years lifting weight and compressing my body through weights, I would use this strategy, but I'd use it a very specific way. Now, there are of course some do's and don'ts to hanging from a bar. If this is gonna be your strategy, you're gonna try it out. One of them is I don't prefer that people that I work with just simply hang from a bar where they are grabbing on and they are completely weight bearing on this bar and their feet are just dangling. I don't suggest that you do that. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I don't think you should do that. One of them is just the position of your lower back. When you're doing that type of position or you're hanging from that position, your lower back is compromised, especially for someone who has a sensitive low back or you've had some kind of surgery or whatever have you. In this situation, as you're hanging, and I'll just kind of show you from the side here in a second, as you're hanging, what happens is you kind of tend to go into an extended position. So you're hanging and then your butt rotates back because your body's just free hanging. It's kind of gonna do its own thing. So for some people, hanging like this puts a little bit unnecessary compression due to that little extension. Again, it's not a big part of the issue when it comes to the extension, because it's not a whole lot. If you look at the video, you see as I'm hanging, it just slightly goes into extension. I know for me personally in the past, when I ruptured my disc, that was actually something that hurt me or caused more issues in the long run. So the other thing I'm not a fan of when it comes to hanging from just the bar is allowing your entire body weight to be hanging from your hands and your shoulders. 
Not that the body's not capable of holding that, but if you're not used to that, shoulders and hands are gonna be the first thing that kind of gives before you can really kind of allow yourself to relax and allow this minor decompression to actually bring some kind of relief without triggering a spasm or a flare up. Now, what I typically do and suggest that you do in a situation where you're trying to use decompression as a tool from a bar hanging is have something to put your feet up on. So if you see down here, I've got a bench, you can use a box, you can use pretty much anything that you have that allows you to bring your feet up. What I'm looking for is for you to be able to bring your hip into somewhat of a bent position or a flexed position just like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly 90 degrees, doesn't have to be 45 degrees. You have more control and it's a lot less technical than if you were like hanging from an inversion table or you're on a traction machine, which no one has a traction machine at their house. But if you were at the clinic, you're kind of working with numbers and formulas and, and, and tension stuff. Here, it's very simple. What I suggest that you do, find a bar that you can hang from, not necessarily having your feet touching the ground. Like for example, me grabbing this bar here, my feet are already on the ground, so I don't have to go fully weight bearing to get the benefit from it. If it's not your situation, what I would do is I'd grab your bench or your box, whatever you have, I'd grab the bar above you and I'd bring my feet up to this position and then here, I'm gonna allow myself to rock and find that neutral place where I can just kind of hang out. In this case here, this is where it's at for me. So what I'm doing here is A, I'm taking some of the weight. So my whole lower body, each leg is pretty heavy. So if I'm, uh, if I'm bringing these feet or my legs up onto this bench, it's taking some weight off, which allows me to hang and be more relaxed when I'm actually doing it from the bar. So once you've got your feet elevated, now it's about figuring out what the best length of time is and what you should do under tension or under this, this decompression state, right? So I'm hanging. I'm here, let's just be here for four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, as long as, as long as I can hold. No, what you want to think about is less time is more, right? And I'm not saying hold it for one second, but if you're thinking along the lines of like, well, if I hold for three minutes, my low back goes numb, and then I don't feel any pain, I don't feel any kind of compression uh, issues going on. So if I think maybe holding it for longer might be better. And that's probably the worst situation or worst mindset you can have because what you're doing, you're making withdrawals on what your body is naturally giving out for temporary relief. It's kind of like your stretch reflex, right? After you stretch your hamstrings, your hamstrings don't feel tight. But within 25 minutes, sometimes shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, the tension comes back, the tightness comes back. So you're just withdrawing money that you really can't put back or you can't afford to be withdrawing. So in this case here, when it comes to time, think short periods of time, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. The other thing I want you to think about is your breathing. Like any kind of stretching, it's a very slow, controlled situation. It is not a, let's just plow through it, push through it. The further we go, the harder we go, the better the results, the more the tissue is gonna succumb to its pressure and then give me relief. It's not like that. So in this case here, I'm up, I'm hanging. What I'll do is I'll actually be holding myself up. I'll exhale and allow my body to go completely limp, but going very slowly. If you're very sensitive, as in you spasm quickly, right? Or you get tension or tightness very quickly from doing something like this, you have to take extra precaution. Your body's going to respond in a way that's gonna be negative. Even though you're doing something positive, you're getting relief, it feels good, it's gonna respond negatively. So you're kind of trying to get this mind-body connection with relaxing, allowing the weight to kind of come on, allowing the lower back to relax. That's the biggest thing. Oftentimes we'll hang and we'll be here, but we're so afraid to relax our lower back that it's just tight, it's just tense. We're contracting it almost subconsciously. So this, this little bit of, of decompression isn't really working for us. So hang out. Relax, try to get all the muscles in the low back and the glutes, the obliques, the abs, everything. Try to get them to relax. Hold this for 30, 35, 40 seconds. Don't go until you get past a certain pain point. Just try to relax. And when you're done, one leg down slowly. 
and then come out of it. Because again, you're trying to get that mind-body connection. You're training the brain to relax and respond positively to something that might have been threatening to you in the past. So I think if done correctly, hanging from a bar, especially if you have low back pain, can be beneficial. If you take it in strides, you take it in small dosages, you respect the mind-body connection, you respect your history of any kind of decompression type of situation. If you are used to using an inversion table, inversion table didn't work for you, I don't suggest this necessarily is going to be the thing that fixes it or is better than an inversion table, but it could be a lot safer, a lot more gentle on the body and on the mind when it comes to getting used to this kind of thing than any kind of decompression that you can do. Follow those guidelines, follow those rules. Let me know what you think. If you've tried the bar and it didn't work, if you prefer the inversion table, or you uh, prefer traction at your physical therapy office, I'm curious to see what your experience has been. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Make sure you like, hit subscribe. I appreciate every one of you who share these videos and gets the word out to get some high quality strength training life-altering information that will help you beat low back pain and just feel better naturally without drugs, without surgery. Make sure you grab that free gift. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain-free training if the decompression works well for you and you're ready to take it to the next level or if it doesn't work well for you and you want to find what's better for you or the next step to try out, grab that free guide. It is for all people who have sensitive low backs, post-fusion, herniations, bulge, ruptures, any kind of disc injury injury history that you may have. I give you everything I know, all the things that you should be looking at and considering if you're looking to do this naturally, holistically get relief, use strength, use movement, use mastering your mindset to get better. And I'll see you on the next episode.